Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We got a big list of updates from Big Fry for his game, Transients. I did cover this game earlier as well during the first devlog, but a lot has changed since then. With the second devlog, we get a better look at weapon attachments, the armor system, and a few gadgets that are a work in progress. To catch people up to speed, Big Fry covers tactical shooters from both the indie scene to large AAA games. He's teamed up with a handful of developers who all want the same thing, a solid tactical shooter that's good at launch. Setting the bar, they plan to put together a single-player, story-based, first-person shooter that takes inspiration from Splinter Cell, Max Payne, and other similar games. Now, let's blitz through everything that was announced in this devlog, along with my thoughts and feedback. If you want to watch the original announcement, a link is available in the description below. So, what new announcements were made in the second devlog? Well, first I want to mention that the game has a manual canted aim option. This was already shown in the original trailer, but wasn't really talked about. You will have the option to use this canted aim at any given time, regardless what attachments are on your weapon. So if you prefer this method, you will have it available to you at all times. Within the gameplay shown in the second devlog, we did get to see that there is also a prone stance in the game, allowing you to get low and take down enemies from underneath vehicles and other obstacles. Moving on to what was actually talked about in the devlog, we get to see a more refined attachment swapping system and how it would look and function, allowing players to swap out attachments mid-game without having to shuffle through a lengthy menu. We also get to look at a P90 style SMG that will be in the game, and when talking about weapon attachments, each platform will have some limitations that would make sense to it. There's not a lot of room for attachments on a P90 to begin with, so that would be very limited. We also got a quick look at two other weapons that are currently being worked on, which includes an MP5 style SMG and a shotgun that is based on the Saiga 12. One thing to remember is that Transients is set in the near future, which includes futuristic armor. We get a better description as to what that means for this game. The armor will be filled with a protective fluid that hardens under impact. While the fluid is hardened, it will prevent damage for a few seconds before it becomes useless. The armor can only carry two charges of this fluid at any given time, and once that fluid is out, you're a few quick shots away from death. The fluid can be found and picked up in each level, but they will be very rare which means you will want to try and not waste your supply as you may not have that protection available for the entire level. While Big Fry and his team were playtesting the game, they decided to include a slow motion ability. This is also going to be tied as part of the suit's ability and will be recharged with its own specific resource. So this is taking more inspiration from the Max Payne games, but in Transients it will be very limited. So you won't be able to abuse slow motion in every gunfight and will have to find the right scenarios to make the most out of it. Along with this, some gadgets in the suit will be different grenade types that will shoot out from the suit's wrist. This includes a flash grenade, a pulse grenade that reveals enemies behind corridors, and an EMP grenade that temporarily disables equipment, including lights and cameras. These are all the gadgets that we know of so far, and we will have to wait in the future to see what more the suit may offer. Another thing that was mentioned was the game is getting a better bullet penetration and a ricochet system. I'm curious to see what that ricochet system is going to be like, Will we be able to understand how bullets will ricochet and quickly calculate some shots, or even go as far as having a limited ammo type or a gadget that could allow for a ricochet kill? It was mentioned in passing as it is in early development, so we'll have to see what it all entails. Originally, the game was set to be released without a HUD, allowing the game to look clean and not have a lot of clutter on screen. However, the gadgets and other elements they plan to throw into this game, they feel it is better to have that option of a HUD. So right now, they do have a concept of what the HUD will look like, and it can be toggled on and off with a press of a button. So we get the best of both worlds for those who don't want the HUD at all, and those who prefer it. And again, the HUD right now is in a concept stage, so that style of HUD may change by the next devlog, or by the time of release. More work has been done on level design, we get a peek of some areas of a new level that's being fleshed out, as well as a quick tour of a white box level that takes place in a server farm. The environments and locations are moody and look great so far. Speaking of which, the lighting has been adjusted in the level that we saw in the first devlog, and here is the look of that hallway, and the lighting system has been redesigned and optimized to allow as many lights as possible to get shot out. It's not to say every light source can be shot out, but a lot of them will be. One design choice in this game that did not sit well with me was how the enemies were lit up. Apparently that was common feedback, and the enemies have now been redesigned. The game has a few different enemy types, so instead of the lights indicating what kind of enemies they are, it will be represented by the kind of armor they are wearing. This way we can tell which one is a typical patrol goon, and which one is armored to the teeth and ready for a fight. The coding for the AI is being migrated to C++ coding for better and more complex AI pathing and how they will react in battle. 
I know it's very early in the development process, but I'm curious to see how the AI is going to react. Will they just instantly know where you are, even if they're nowhere near you after going loud? Or will they try and pinpoint where the shot came from, allowing you to move elsewhere before you're cornered? Personally, for a stealth game, I do like the AI approach that is in the Sniper Elite series of games, where the enemies will know where your shot was, but so long as you're not in the open, you will have a chance to move on to another location and blindside the enemy. Let's remember that the game is also having its own soundtrack. In the dev vlog, we get a sample of a new track that will be in the game, and this is what that sounds like. Big Fry explains that there has been interest from publishers and others that want to take part in the creation of the game. With this, the team developed a kill house environment that is randomly generated every time you go in. This was put together to showcase the game's mechanics in a way that is separate from the main development of the game. This kill house area is not currently planned to be released, but I do think it would be neat to have access to it as part of the game's release, maybe have a simple version of it for everyone, and then a full suite after beating the game as a reward. For now, Big Fry prefers to release this game without being supported by a publisher, and I don't blame him. This is to preserve the overall development of the game so he can release what he wants, instead of what a publisher may want, and lose the vision of what he wanted the game to be. There is no expected release date as of yet, the way the development has been going may have the game released sometime in 2024. Big Fry is emphasizing that until the game is further along in development, he does not want to commit to a release window. A lot of the game is still under development as you would expect, everything from the levels, to voice acting, to adding more weapons and attachments. I'm still very interested in this project, but don't get too excited just yet. There is still a lot of work to be done. That's what we know so far of the game and where it currently sits. I haven't changed my mind about this game, I still think it's going to be fun and worth playing from what we know about it. Again, it's nothing revolutionary, the game is all single player, and is not planned to be a large epic tale. Just a solid, single player, tactical shooter. I'm excited to see where this game goes, and I really do hope that it does break out and gets noticed by more people for the better as this can lead to more projects being worked on in the future. If you've gotten this far in this video and you've enjoyed this quick breakdown, please give this video a like and consider subscribing. It would make my day. Let me know what you think about this game so far and what are your expectations. Until then, I am Mr. Rain, and I will see you next time.